Hello friends, welcome to Davis. Um, for those of you joining me from home, I'm here on campus. It's beautiful, a little quiet, a little lonely, but there's a group of us here, six feet apart. Some people are masked, not me, because I'm talking to you. Uh, but we're gonna do our best to give you the best tour that we can do during this crisis. Um, and I'll be able to show you a bunch of different things about campus. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Victor. I'm a fourth year biological sciences student. I'm studying biological sciences, but also minoring in Chicano and Chicana studies, hopefully going into medicine later on in life. Um, but there's a bunch of different things that I've done other than that. Um, I've been in an acapella group, I'm in a fraternity, there's a bunch of different things that I'll tell you all about while we're on the tour. Mind you, I'm going to be walking backwards, I'm going to show you my cool little trick that I can do. Um, so if anyone has any questions, I'm going to ask Sally to filter those to me, um, and she will just ask a question and I'll answer it for you all. Uh, are you guys ready to start walking? Let's just, I forgot. We're doing this online. Um, also, just be aware, we are doing this online, so if at any point, like, the internet malfunctions, or the iPhone breaks, girl, we don't know what's gonna happen. Um, we're just gonna fix it up real quick, and we'll get back online. So, it'll be totally fine, peachy keen. But where we are right now on campus is kind of the Gateway District. Um, this is Vanderhoof Quad, which is home to the Welcome Center, where you usually come and you'll get a tour. Right behind it, we have the Hyatt Hotel. Um, which is a hotel on campus where parents and visitors can stay. You can't really see it because it's behind Gallagher Hall, which is actually our graduate school of management, which is super awesome. Um, and so if you want to go to grad school in like business or anything, this is definitely the building you want to go to. Fun fact, it's actually the only building on campus named after an alumni. It's a pretty cool thing to know. Um, but behind us, we actually have our alumni center, known as the Walter A. Bueller Alumni Center. It's a pretty cool building, has a bunch of different cool things that students and alumni can both be a part of. So there's our Student Alumni Association, our Calagi Alumni Association, and a bunch of different like cool programs that you can do. One is known as Interview with an Aggie. Um, it's where you're paired up with an alumni to kind of practice your interview skills. Super awesome, definitely recommend you Um, we also have had a bunch of different cool authors, but also some of our on-campus clubs. Um, so one of my favorites is actually known as Hella Capella. It's our all-female acapella group on campus. Um, they actually put on this giant show, which is fully acapella, only their mouths make noises, super awesome. And they invite groups all the way down from like San Diego up to Oregon. Um, one of my favorite groups is called On The Rocks, and they're from Oregon. Um, so it's super cool, definitely recommend you check it out. Uh, but Sally, what kind of questions do we have from the peanut gallery at home? <laughs> um, we have a question about Greek life. Can you talk about that? Yeah, so I'm actually in a part of Greek life. Um, so not a lot of students decide to do it. We have about, I want to say 40,000 students, graduate and um, undergraduate students. Um, and so about 10% of those students decide they want to be a part of Greek life. We have social fraternities and sororities, cultural social and social like fraternities. Whoa. We have cultural fraternities and sororities as well as professional sororities and fraternities. Um, so there's all kinds of different parts of Greek life that you can be a part of if it's something you want to do. It's there for if you want it. It's also there for you if you don't want it. Um, so it's a part of campus, but it's not a super big thing. So it's not like the, if you're not in Greek life, you're not gonna have your home on campus. Because the fun thing about Davis is you can make your home anywhere on campus. Whether it be as part of your college, part of your major, whether it be a part of Greek life, whether it be a part of the different clubs that you join. Um, they'll all come all together and be your Davis, and that's what I love about it. Um, and so I'm a part of Sigma Nu Fraternity. Um, it's a pretty cool social fraternity here on campus, and we focus on love, honor, truth. It's pretty awesome. I definitely recommend um, that you check it out. Ooh. Oh, my Lanta. Let's jump onto the street because we got some picnickers behind us. Let's do it. Um, but across the street from me, we actually have King Hall. It's home to our graduate school of law. 
Um, it's honestly a really good law school. Um, it's in like the, I think the top 30, which is super awesome. Um, so I definitely recommend you guys check it out if that's something you want to do later on. Um, there are a bunch of different positions as undergrads that you can have. I know a friend who actually worked in the law school and she's studying for the LSAT right now to eventually go to law school, which is super awesome. So I definitely recommend if law is something you want to do, look at all the different programs, see how you can get involved as an undergrad, whether it be through an internship or a different like volunteer opportunity so you can get the experience under your belt. Sally, any other questions? Yeah, so how do you get involved in your first year? Um, it really kind of just, it, I would say it kind of depends on like your personality, because um, a lot of it is you putting your foot in the door. So you have to go on to Handshake, uh, Handshake, which is an online system that can help you find a bunch of different internship and uh, like career opportunities while you're an undergrad. Um, and through Handshake, you'll be able to find all of them throughout the entire campus, through surrounding cities, different things like that. Um, and so as a first year, you have all these different opportunities for you. You just have to go out and get them, right? Um, and so jumping onto Handshake would be one. One of the things that I didn't do, but I totally regret doing now as a fourth year, was simply emailing my professors. Um, and so I had a few professors my freshman year who, they were pretty big classes because they were about like, I want to say maybe 400 students. Um, and so it's pretty intimidating to talk to your professor, right? Um, but there's something you can do where you just email your professor, you're like, hi, I'm an undergrad, I'm in your class, I'm doing pretty well, or I'm doing okay, um, and I really want to get some internship or like some lab kind of experience under my belt. Do you know anyone or do you have anything in your lab that I can be a part of? Um, and most likely they'll reference you to someone who is hiring for their lab or they will hire you in their lab. So for me, it was in my biochemistry class for, it was Biz 102, um, my professor, Dr. Leal, um, I just sent him an email after we took the course and I got a lab position in his lab. So that's definitely one of the ways you can do it as an undergrad in just your first year. There's also a bunch of different like student clinics um, that you can get involved in if you want to go into like pre-health as a first year, which will definitely help you get the experience under your belt so you can do anything you want to do in the next three-ish years. But yeah, good question. Any other questions? Oh, good one. Yeah. Um, so right now, we're actually heading into the Arboretum. This is honestly one of my favorite locations on campus. You'll run into everything here. You have river otters, turtles, ducks. Some people walk their horses through the Arboretum. Not gonna lie, this is one of my favorite locations on campus. It is the quietest location on campus though, so it's honestly the best place to take a nap. And you can tell because I am literally the loudest person in the Arboretum right now. Um, but usually people come out here just to relax, soak in the sun. During quarantine, it's a great place for a run um, if you want to do that. But you'll see some people just chilling out around here so they can kind of do their thing, relax, get outside for a little bit, especially on a really nice day like this, chilling next to Spafford Lake. That's definitely something you might want to do. Um, but there's a bunch of different things that do go on here in the Arboretum. Um, and so there are things like Picnic Day. A few years ago, we actually had Battle of the Bands here in the Arboretum, but now that's located over in front of Marac Hall, um, which we'll see later on, hopefully. Um, but there are a bunch of other things that go on throughout the entire year. There's like plant sales through the Arboretum um, and a whole bunch of different things. So we have like a redwood grove over in like the northeast side of the Arboretum and all the way on the south side you'll run into the oak grove. Both are beautiful. Highly recommend both of them because they're both amazing. Um, but definitely keep that in mind. Sally, next question. Yeah. Um, so transfer housing, is it close to campus? How far is it from campus? That kind of question. Um, transfer housing actually is pretty close to campus. And if it's not close to campus, there's a bus system that can connect you to campus. So I want to say at most, it's about, I want to say a five to 10 minute bus ride. Um, and it'll take you to central campus or it's maybe like a 15 minute bike ride. Um, but also there's transfer housing here on campus itself and so you can live across the street at the college at LaRue you can live over at Russell Park Serrano Park a whole bunch of different options 
for you as a transfer student. So definitely keep that in mind. You don't only have to go into off-campus housing, you can also go into some housing that we have here through the housing and dining services. Um, but I think the closest one that a lot of transfer students like to live at is West Village. And West Village is right over the freeway. It's about, I want to say, a 10 minute bike ride to campus and maybe like a four minute bus ride from West Village to the central part of campus. It'll drop you off right next to the silo, which quack, we'll see quack, later quack. on. Thank you. Oh my God, ducks. Um, but it is pretty awesome um, that you have all these different ways to get onto campus, not just walking, biking, um, or even driving your own car. You have the buses that can get you around. But yeah, good question. Okay, next question. Yep. Oh, the Davis vibe. What's it like? Um, so coming from LA, um, I would honestly say the Davis vibe is very just relaxed and mellow. So you make of it what you want. Um, I came in thinking that I was going to wake up every day at 6 a.m., have a plan on what I was going to do. It was going to be bing, bada boom, bada bing, bada boom. Nope. That is not how I am at all anymore. I can wake up at six o'clock in the morning, I'll drink a cup of tea, I'll sit on my papasan, and I'll read a book for like 15 minutes, and then I'll just kind of do whatever I want with the rest of the day. I'll come to the Arboretum, I'll go to Trader Joe's, um, I'll just do a bunch of random things, and that's definitely what I feel like the Davis vibe is like, because you have a different thing you can do every day. You can ride your bike around the city of Davis, you can go to Puda Creek and swing off of like the swings that we have down the way over there. Um, there's just a whole bunch of different things you can do, and the vibes are just that. So I definitely recommend, if you want to feel out the Davis vibe, um, when quarantine is done, come check it out for yourself. You'll see that it's actually a really great place to be in a time like this. Yeah, great question. Okay. Um, can you speak a little for the students, like the values and Yeah, uh, I'm actually gonna do that after we like, kind of go through this little part. It's a little tricky, so I'm gonna turn around. We're just gonna kind of venture in. Take a look around, take in the scenery. Welcome to the Arboretum. Alright, so Sally's next or last question was, what is the culture like here on campus? What are some of the Davis values? Um, a question of the sorts, right? Um, we are going to take like a little break right here in the shade for a little bit so you can look around. Um, check out our Arts and Humanities District here on campus. Um, but the Davis values and like the culture here on campus is honestly unlike any other. So I think we pride ourselves on being a very diverse campus and a very friendly campus. Um, so no matter who you are, where you come from, we're going to welcome you with open arms. Um, and I definitely think we do a really good job at doing that um, because I came and the second I got onto campus, I felt like I was home. And the second you come to campus, you'll feel like you're home because that's just Davis. Um, but that's a lot of our values and our culture. Once you walk around on campus, if you decide this is the place you want to go to, you'll see that campus is awesome and everyone just wants to spread a little love. Um, I kind of feel like sometimes it's very like Woodstock vibes here on campus where it's just like you see kids hula hooping and just having fun on the quad and doing all these cool fun different things um, that the culture is honestly one of my favorite things that I've experienced in my entire life. Uh, but yeah, so here in this district, um, this is the Arts and Humanities District like I mentioned, we have um, the Wyatt Theater, Wyatt Hall, uh, Wright Hall, sorry, not Wyatt Hall, Wright Hall, which is really awesome. I've had a few classes here. Uh, we also have the music building over here on our right hand side, which is kind of connected to it through a tunnel. And then we have the art building right over there. Um, and so all of these buildings are connected through the Arts and Humanities District. It's super awesome. All of them have super awesome things. In the music building, I've actually 
like kind of use my own space for my acapella group. Um, I was the music director, so I had to sit listening to the same song for like hours on end, trying to figure out every single note of the song so that we can perform it later on. And you can actually like check out, I don't know if check out's the right word, it's like not rent, rent for free. We'll say that. Um, and you can rent for free that space so that you can be there for however long you want and just use the space for your music whateverness. Um, and then in the art building, there's a bunch of different cool stuff. There's like a student art gallery. There's a computer lab specific for our art students. And so if art is something you want to do, it could be like a major or a minor. This is definitely the place you want to come. Another cool place for art on campus would be the Jan Schrem and Maria Minetti Schrem Museum of Art over by the Welcome Center, which you might have seen, might have not seen. I kind of forgot to point it out. But it's a really cool museum that, gra that um, houses like graduate student art as well as just some well-known artists. Um, and it's open to all students and the public for free. It's super great. So when quarantine is done and, done and you come to Davis, check out the Jan Schrem Museum. But yeah, next question. Hi, Chancellor May. How's it going? Uh, cool. And then, um, since folks want to know, is UCD just the biggest UC? Okay, so uh, we aren't the biggest UC in terms of population. Um, we have about, I want to say, 40 ish thousand students give or take a few, I think it's a, a little less, um, but we are the largest UC in terms of acreage. So we span over 5,600 acres, and that's not only here on like in the Davis campus, but we also have a campus over in like Sacramento, that's our med school. We have our 40 acres of experimental vineyards over in Napa or in Oakville near Napa. Um, we have the Bodega Bay Marine Laboratory. So you think Davis is just in Davis? Nah, girl, we're everywhere. We're in your back pocket, kid and kid, you know. Um, but we are in a bunch of different cool places um, that you can actually be a part of as you're a student here. So, for example, the Marina Coastal Sciences major through the College of Biological Sciences, you have to go for a quarter to the Bodega Bay Marine Lab, which is really awesome. So you get experience in the field you want to go into. That's awesome. Am I right? I'm right. That's awesome. Okay, let's continue walking over to campus and we'll answer another question from Sally. Oh, great question. Why did I come to Davis? So, I actually was waitlisted at Davis. Um, and so, I would not change my decision for the world. Um, I was either going to go to Cal Poly Slow or Davis. Very similar schools, both super awesome. But my heart was just with Davis, right? Um, and so, with the second I got to campus, I realized this is where I needed to be. I wanted kind of small town big kid that's how I imagine myself I'm a big personality I get pretty annoying pretty quick um, but I do love um, just Davis in general because of the vibes the culture and all the opportunities that I have here um, in my four years I've done more than I could ever imagine I've studied abroad which was super awesome I was in an acapella group which not many people get to say they were a part of um, we have a request. Somebody wants you to yeah. sing. Oh, uh, <laughs> darn. <laughs> oh, um, here, we'll say this. At the very end of the tour, um, if you all remember, I'll do it. Period. Exclamation point dot. Okay? But right now, we'll continue on with the tour. Dang it. <laughs> the what? And your story. What story? Oh, yes. <laughs> so why did I pick Davis, right? Um, it was just, honestly, it felt like home. Um, and that is, a lot of people will tell you that Davis felt like home. And you won't understand it until you experience it, if that makes sense. Because the second I walked onto campus, I saw people smiling. Um, I saw people interacting, just chilling on the quad, which is actually, we're coming up on it. Um, and there was just a lively student kind of student life on campus which I absolutely loved and so Davis just felt like excuse me the right place to be and it was I love this place I'm an Aggie ride or die not gonna lie um well that's pretty good that was good um but um I wouldn't change my decision for the world and I'm super glad I did it but yeah next question how many eggheads are on campus yes the eggheads 
So I don't know if you guys saw them, um, but over in the Arts and Humanities District, we had two little sculptures. Um, those were actually eggheads. That's what we call them here on campus. There's actually seven of them. There's two there. There's three over by Marac Hall, which we'll probably see later on in the tour. Um, and then there's one behind all these brown shingled buildings behind me. Um, and so there are seven. Oh, and there's one in front of the library. Um, so they're all over campus. They're only found here at Davis. They were actually founded by Robert Arneson, um, one of our late professors who had art in the Smithsonian, which is super awesome. Um, and so he was the father of the ceramic funk movement. Anyone know what that is? I don't, but it's super awesome. Um, and it's a cool thing that Davis gets to say. And so if you ever come to Davis, the eggheads are honestly everyone's favorite. Um, for, with students who are graduating, usually take grad picks with them. Um, it's just a really fun place or fun thing to do in your four years that you're here. But yeah, um, but we are gonna take a quick little break on the quad. So you guys can kind of see, honestly, the actual center of our campus. It's not like the center center, but this is where everyone is all the time. Um, so this giant grassy area, this is my favorite place on campus, period. Okay, I'm literally, that center walkway is called Centennial, the Centennial walkway. Um, and it is my favorite thing to do on like a really nice brisk morning to just take a stroll down Centennial and just watch the quad just be still. No students, just be still. And it's honestly one of the greatest feelings in the world. Um, so students, if you're here at Davis, maybe you're stuck in Davis or you're in Davis period, uh, take a stroll down Centennial. You'll understand exactly what I'm talking about. On each side of the quad, there's actually these blue poles, which are hammocks that ASUCD, our student government, kind of leaves not leaves but like they put out for our students so we can relax on the quad because a lot of your time is spent in the classroom working hard you're using like the two brain cells you have left after quarantine to study and get through all of our academics you want to come to the quad and just relax right the hammocks are just one of the places you can do it my favorite though is just laying on the grass because who doesn't love being a dog not gonna lie not gonna lie um, but I do want to point out these brown shingle buildings kind of behind us over here. And so the brown shingle bu building that we're staring at, that's South Hall. South Hall is pretty cool, but next to it we have North Hall. Those two buildings were actually the original dorms on campus. When our school was founded in around like 1908, we have 40,000 students like I mentioned. I don't think all of us are going to fit in just these two buildings. Um, so we actually now have student dorms all located on the west side of campus. Hi, friends. Um, <laughs> um, but on the west side of campus, we have the three different dorms, Quarto, Segundo, and Tercero. Um, they're all different, um, and I'll tell you a little about them later on because I'm pretty sure we have a question about housing. But I want to tell you a little bit about what these buildings are now. So South Hall, it's actually a really big building for like internship and career opportunities so we have the ICC or the internship and career center which help you write a resume write a cover letter improve your interview skills I think even now you can still access their services they're just online you can have a little zoom chat with someone talk over your resume ask them how to write a cover letter do a mock interview to improve your interview skills different things like that they also put on career fairs throughout the year so that students in like their first, second, third, and fourth year, but mainly the third and fourth years, um, so that they can get jobs that they can hopefully take on to later on. I know a bunch of friends who got a position their fourth year at a career fair and are still doing that now um, all over the world. Um, so it's a pretty cool thing that the ICC or South Hall puts on for their students, so I definitely recommend if you're here, you decide to come here, you definitely utilize those services. Right next to it, like I mentioned, North Hall. North Hall's home to the Student Counseling Health Services. Really great place. We want to focus on mental health, especially now and after COVID. Uh, we're definitely going to need them more than ever. Um, and so they have a bunch of different um, therapists and psychologists you can talk to at any time throughout the school year, um, as well as a bunch of different programs to kind of just help you while you're going through college. Because honestly, college is hard period and sometimes you just need to cry it out and they're there to listen to you and so I definitely recommend using them even if you're feeling a little stressed out it's a good thing to just go talk to them and they can tell you don't worry it's okay they can act like mom while you're at college so it's kind of cool um, but yeah Sally next question yeah we have some questions about tutoring tutoring oh perfect so we'll actually kind of walk down a little bit so you can actually see a few of the buildings that have some tutoring services for our students 
Um, and so here in South Hall, as well as Dutton Hall, which we're going to see in a little bit, um, if you just kind of follow me over, um, we have the like Student Academic Success Center. They don't call it that anymore. I'm blanking on the name, but just know it's a cool thing to go to if like, you need help with any of your classes. Let's say you're a first and second year, you're taking calculus, biology, chemistry, statistics, physics, anything of the sort, you're taking an English class. Um, there's a bunch of different like student tutoring services um, that can help you throughout your time while you're taking those classes. I've used the calc services. They helped me pass calc. 100%. Um, I've used the chem services. I've used the statistics services. Literally, it's just a really great place to kind of get the academic help that you need throughout your four years. Um, and so that's going to be found here in South Hall as well as in Dutton Hall, which when we kind of continue walking, you'll see all these beautiful white windows, this beautiful fountain. Um, and that's where you're going to find all our different tutoring services. Also in Dutton Hall though, we have our financial aid and scholarships offices, as well as um, the Transfer Reentry Center, which is a really nice place for transfer students if you want your own like hub on campus where you have specific advisors and different people to talk to about transferring specifically. This is gonna be the building you wanna head to so you can find all those different resources. So like I said, it's a building right over there behind all these beautiful trees um, with like all the white windows, the doors, the fountain. You got it. Next question. Bikes, yes, give me one second. Yeah. So, um, there was an old tour guide. His name was Christian. Hi, Christian, if you're watching. Um, he told me Davis is the New Zealand of schools. And I was like, Christian, I don't understand that at all. And I don't think any people on your tour will ever understand that. But he told me the joke, and it's actually really funny. So I hope all of you will laugh at home. But New Zealand has more sheep than people. And so Davis is the New, New Zealand of schools because we have more bikes than people. <laughs> it's funny, period. Um, but um, we have about 40,000 bikes on campus and a little less than 40,000 students. Um, and so we have professors, TAs, a bunch of different people biking to campus. So that's why we have so many bikes. But then I want to say a good majority of our students bike. Honestly, we have more bike parking spots than actual parking spots here on campus. You want to know why? Because we're sustainable. So if you look all around us, oh, bouncy. Um, if you look all around us, there's literally bike parking everywhere and that's because during the school year it's honestly pretty hard to find parking in this area specifically because the quad is right here and everyone just wants to be here during the springtime as you can see um, but there is a lot of bikes on campus you do have to follow some bike laws though so because you're riding a bike you're technically a vehicle and so you have to stop at stop signs, use your hand signals that you learned in driving school or you will learn in driving school. So there's like the right, stop, left. Obviously I didn't learn them. But the, your hand signals, you need them. Um, they're helpful to let other like bikers know what you're doing. Um, quick little tip, bike circles. And so you know what roundabouts are for cars? We have those here for bikes. We'll see one later on. Make sure you kind of use them correctly. You want to go counterclockwise. If you're going to exit, stay on like the farthest outside kind of part of the bike circle. If you're going to literally just loop around, try and squeeze yourself into like the middle. Um, because sometimes, not going to lie, bike accidents do happen. But the great thing about Davis is it happens. Everyone literally just tries to help you up as fast as possible because we all know how embarrassing it is when you fall off your bike. I've never been in a bike accident because I consider a bike accident like you and someone else hitting and then you both falling off your bike. But I've fallen off my bike plenty of times and every single time there's always someone there to help me up, ask me if I'm okay, walk me to my class because I'm literally just, whoa, what happened? Um, but there's always people there to help you up. So don't ever feel like you're alone or anything because the Davis community is here to help. Yeah, so do I need a bike on campus? Uh, no, you don't. And so let's say you're a first year, you're living in the dorms, and like you bike your first quarter, but you realize biking's not for you, you can literally walk on campus. I wanna say getting from one side of campus to the other, although it may seem far, it literally can only take you 10 minutes if you're walking with a purpose. Um, and so you just wanna make sure that you give yourself enough time to get from point A to point B. If you are walking, biking will obviously get you there faster. You can skateboard, anything you want. Um, but let's say you're living off campus, right? You're living maybe 
in North Davis. Um, that's about, I want to say 15, maybe like a 10 minute bike ride to like central campus. Um, you can walk that if you want, or you can utilize the Unitrans bus system, which is a student run bus system that operates the entire city of Davis by our students, which is awesome. Um, and so the students are the bus drivers and everything, and they'll get you to campus before your class, way before your class, right before your class. They'll get you to campus so that you can do whatever you need to do. But yeah, good question. Yeah. Let's continue walking, everyone. We're gonna take a quick little break. Just enjoy the quad. It's a beautiful day. Um, so some of you guys are asking about the dorm. So we are going to go to the dorms. They're on the west side of campus. It just might take us a little bit to walk over there. Um, but we are going to get to them, so don't worry. Beautiful day. What? I didn't even know we had that. All right, everyone. So we're chilling here, probably like, I want to say a good part of the quad um, or of the Memorial Union, MU for short. Um, and so it's a little Davis lingo. We like to call it the MU. Um, but this is a really nice place just to come. You'll run into a lot of people here if you decide to come here. Because right connected to the Memorial Union, we have the ASUCD Coffee House or the Coho. Um, and literally people will sit there for hours on end and they'll be studying they'll just be hanging out with friends and this is honestly the place where if you're just walking by you'll definitely run into someone that you know uh, and so people will be tabling on these tables and what that means is different clubs or organizations on campus will sit there and they'll kind of promote their clubs to get you to join um, another way they do that are all these beautiful a-frames that you kind of see around excuse me they're so much fun. As you can tell, I didn't know the side deck club was a thing. What? I'm a huge record person. Definitely recommend that. Uh, but there's a whole bunch of different clubs that you can learn about. Um, we have about 800 here on campus. And in this brick building behind me, uh, the, uh, what is it called? I'm totally blanking on the name. The club, uh, CSI. The Center for um, Student Involvement. Yeah, there we go, the Center for Student Involvement. I don't know why I was blanking on that. I was like, whoa. Um, but they have over 800 clubs registered, probably more at this point. Um, and it's a great place to go if you wanna find out how to get involved on campus. Um, and so all these different A-frames you see around, that's only a portion of our clubs. There's so many more. And it's all online if you just go to CSI's website. Um, you can definitely find all the different organizations that you can eventually be a part of. Um, and so this is honestly a pretty great place. The Memorial Union is an awesome place. I love coming here just to people watch. There's a spot inside right next to this giant window where you can watch people just like coming on and off the bus. I was saying that and I was like, mm, probably shouldn't say that. So you're welcome if you heard it. Um, but the Memorial Union is great. Um, here we also have a whole bunch of other different things inside, right? And so um, we have ASUCD, which is our student government. Fun fact, our student government actually operates on a $12 million budget, probably more now that a new referendum passed. Um, and they operate more than like 30 units on campus. That includes the Calagi newspaper, um, all those different hammocks you see around. They do picnic day. I haven't even talked about picnic day. Ooh, good, you missed out. Um, but um, ASUCD does a whole bunch of other things that are super awesome for campus and for students. Um, and I'll definitely tell you about them right now. So we have things throughout the spring and throughout the year known as like picnic day, the whole earth festival, sunset fest, a whole bunch of different things for all of our students to enjoy. My favorite is whole earth. Um, and so you guys saw the quad, how big grassy area that was. 
Now, imagine there were stages set up all over the quad. There were artisan booths set up all over the quad. There was this cool, like, art dome structure in, like, the middle of the quad. That's the whole Earth Festival. I take it as, imagine, like, Woodstock meets Coachella meets old people meets young people meets bubbles meets hula hoops. It's great. Honestly, one of the funnest things that happens on campus is usually around like Mother's Day weekend. Um, and so I actually flew my mom up for Mother's Day one year and she came and she enjoyed it. And she was like, whoa, this is what you do on campus? And I said, yup, every day. <laughs> kidding, kidding, no. It only happens during Mother's Day weekend. Um, and so it's a really fun time. Unfortunately, we won't be having it this spring, but next spring, you bet we gonna have it, and you bet I'm gonna show up. See you there. Um, but picnic day is another thing that happens on the quad, which is a huge event for the entire campus. Um, so it's kind of like our open house, where we invite about 50,000 or a, just a lot of people to come onto campus and just see what Davis is about. There's a parade that goes through downtown and central campus. There's a whole bunch of different departments that put on a bunch of different shows and a bunch of different like kind of demonstrations. Um, so you can milk the cows, you can get some grapes over at the um, Robert Mondavi Institute for Wine and Food Science. You can get some nitrogen ice cream. You can play with maggot art over in the um, at the entomology building. There's a whole bunch of other things you can do. Uh, oh, and there's a doxy to be raised where wiener dogs are literally just running loose in the pavilion. So much fun. Definitely recommend it when you guys get the opportunity to do it. Everyone comes out for picnic day. It's a thing that happens in downtown Davis and on campus. It's just a big Davis celebration day. And so I definitely recommend you guys come to it when you can once it's a thing again. But yeah, it actually just happened. It was a lot of fun. Um, any other questions? Let's keep walking. Um, if you guys want to see, this is Centennial. It's a beautiful walkway. This is the one I was talking about. It's great. Hi, Centennial. Love you. All right, next question. Food. Food. I mean, that's not a question. <laughs> but it's not a question. Lots of questions. Yes. Okay, so I'll split this up into two different parts. So there's food on campus and food off campus. So food on campus, it's great, hands down. So you have the dining commons. Um, so there's three different dining commons in each of, actually now there's four. There's four different dining commons. Um, two in Terracero, which is one of the residential halls. <clears throat> It'll probably be the one we kind of head over into, so you guys can check that out. Um, there's one in Segundo, one in Cuarto, um, and so they're honestly great meal options for you. There's a bunch of different meal plans you can get. Three specifically, there's the Aggie Unlimited, the Aggie Blue, and the Aggie Gold. Um, and so I definitely recommend you guys kind of, thank you, um, look into it and see if that is kind of an option you want to do. As a student who lives off campus, you can also buy swipes um, so you can access the dining commons while you're on campus. Another great place to eat is the Silo, which we'll see later on. That's a great eatery on campus. It actually just opened up. Super excited. Wish I could go there right now, but we can't. Um, so there, there's usually like a crepe restaurant with crepes made by an actual French guy. There's uh, the Spokes Grill, which um, has like a bunch of different bike kind of punny meals, um, like the Spokes. Those are chicken tenders and they're delicious. Um, they have a bunch of different fries and burgers and stuff. We have Gun Rock Pub, which is like a full on restaurant on campus that actually does serve alcohol if you're older than 21, which is pretty cool. Um, and then we also have this area right over here at the Memorial Union, the coffee house. Um, it's really sad that it's closed, not gonna lie. Um, but we have a bunch of different things that include like a burrito bar or like Tex-Mix. We have pho, we have bagels, sandwiches, you name it, we got it. There's also a really nice coffee bar inside. So if you ever want like a quick chai latte, that's definitely the place to go. I honestly recommend a lavender tea with some soy milk and honey. Deceased, so good, so good. Uh, but those are a lot of different places to eat on campus. Uh, oh, I completely forgot about the food trucks. Food trucks are a big favorite on campus. My favorite, Shaw's. 
Um, I get a falafel over rice, extra rice, no spicy, because I can't handle spicy. But if you want to try it, do it. A lot of people like chicken over rice, extra spicy. Honestly, they're all good. 10 out of 10 would recommend. Uh, but a big majority of where my money goes, not gonna lie, is off campus because, gosh, the best way to talk to me is with food in my hand. Um, and so one of my favorite things on campus are Alibaba's breakfast burritos. Um, those are yummy. There's also Zia's. It's a deli in downtown. Crateville. Um, there's Burgers and Brew. Nami Sushi. Makuni Sushi. Sam's Mediterranean. Oh my god, my mouth. Oh my god, yeah. We literally are the capital of boba in Northern California. I'm kidding. No, there's definitely like Santa, San Francisco. That's like the capital. But we have a lot of boba here in Davis. Um, so we have it if you want it. It's 10 out of 10 would recommend. If it's something you want to do. Oh, we're running into construction. Um, so we are just going to take a quick little detour somewhere else. Um, on campus. Um, where? Let's find out. I'm going to take a quick little break. Enjoy campus. And we'll kind of join you Okay, just kidding, we're taking a break. We'll see you guys in a little bit. We'll be back in like five minutes. What's up, you cool cats and kittens? We're back here, heart of campus, right behind me. We got California Hall. It's a huge building, it's pretty new. Um, seats about, I wanna say like 600-ish people. Um, has some swivel chairs, which are awesome. My favorite part about this lecture hall though is the fact that, let's say, here, imagine this. You're in lecture, suddenly your brain gets a little ting, and then you're like, what is that? You have to pee. You get up, you go to the restroom, you're like, oh no, I'm gonna miss lecture. They have speakers in the bathroom so you can hear the lecture while you're peeing. That is awesome! I never thought I'd be so grateful for that, but it was so much fun when it happened. So, California Hall, by far, best lecture hall on campus. And that's on period. Let's go, friends. Let's head into my home on campus, which I love. Um, that is the, like, so, what is it? The sciences area, life sciences district here on campus. Um, and so, honestly, this area is huge. Don't mind that truck that's beeping everywhere. Um, it's just backing up. Um, but I can be loud, don't worry. Um, some of you asked why, on like the other live, why I wasn't wearing a mask. If I was wearing a mask, it would sound like this and you wouldn't be able to hear me. And so if I don't wear a mask, I can project and you can hear me. So that's why I'm not wearing a mask. But six feet worry, we're all staying safe. What is happening to the ground? But um, it is a pretty like safe environment that we are in. Um, with that in mind, before I jump into the life sciences area on campus, I want to tell you a little bit about safety on campus itself or in downtown. Um, and so in my four years that I've been here, there has never, and I mean never been a time, actually, there was one time, but generally campus is pretty safe. It's pretty lit at night, <laughs> kidding. Um, but there's like lights everywhere um, so that it stays pretty lit so that if you happen to be biking at like three o'clock in the morning, why are you up at three o'clock in the morning? But you're biking at three o'clock in the morning, don't worry, it's fine. You're gonna be able to find your bike path home um, but let's say you're studying at the 24-hour study room over at the library and then you're there till like 3 in the morning, right? Um, you want to get home, you live off campus, the bus has stopped running, how are you going to get home? Our police department actually has this thing called Safe Ride. It's the Aggie Safe Ride. Um, it's where you can use the TapRide app on your phone, request a Safe Ride to kind of come pick you up at the library and it'll drop you off at home. So there are different ways where you can get home, but generally it's pretty safe. Not gonna lie, our biggest crime on campus is bike theft. And I'm pretty glad it's bike theft and not like a zombie apocalypse or anything because I think I'd rather have my bike taken than be eaten by a zombie. I'll finish that there. But welcome to my home here on campus. There's a little bit of construction right now, so it looks a little janky, but trust me, it's beautiful. There's a bunch of different cool plants. Um, there's a bunch of different like things that you can do. There's a building that we've been walking next to. It's called Herring Hall. Um, it actually has our gross 
anatomy lab inside or a cadaver lab. Um, so we're actually one of the only schools left in the US that has a gross anatomy lab. So you can take CHA 50 or our gross anatomy class and actually have classes where you're looking at human cadavers. That's awesome. So if you wanna go into like the health field or anything like that, you can definitely utilize that class and gain all that different experience uh, to look into a human body, which is awesome. Um, but over here, the building that we're walking next to, this is Sci Labs or the Science Laboratory building. Um, and so this building, I've been in every single year that I've been in undergrad. So last, I would say this past quarter, my favorite class that I've taken by far was PLB 116, uh, and that is plant morphology. I took it with Judy Jernst, Jernst, I don't know how to say her name, but by far, coolest professor, so carefree, so much fun. I honestly, before taking that class, never thought I would love plants as much as I do, but plants are so much fun, and they're beautiful. You guys saw my plants on my the post yesterday? I love plants. They're literally, me and plants, we like these, we like these. But on the very top floor of the science lab building, um, we actually have a greenhouse where plant science students can grow their plants and take them straight into lab, which is super awesome. And we also have a conservatory behind the life sciences um, kind of area so that you can also have plants growing there as well. Um, there's a bunch of different saltwater taps as well as laboratories for like intro to chem, intro to bio. But let's say you are a life sciences major and you need your advisor for any reason. Your advisor is actually located in this building at the very first floor. It's called the Basque. Um, and you can just kind of go there, talk to your advisor, get the help you need, and plan out your schedule for the next four years. Um, so that's a big thing for students in the College of Biological Sciences. This will be a big place that you're at throughout all four years. But not only those students, you'll also find engineering students, you'll find um, maybe like animal science students, all kinds of students in this area and all over campus because you're not only specified to one specific area, you're all over the place. But honestly, this is one of my favorite locations on campus just because I'm here all the time. Um, and so once you guys get here, you'll realize maybe you'll be here all the time because another big lecture hall we have coming up over here on our, what is that, our right hand side um, is Silec or the Science Lecture Hall. Um, and so it's a pretty cool lecture hall. So it's about like, I want to say four, maybe 300 ish students. Um, and so on that note, classes sometimes are that big when it's intro to this, intro to that. Um, but your classes do shrink down as you go into your upper divs and you advance your studies later on. Um, but those larger classes do break down into smaller discussions. So you get the 20 to 1 student to faculty ratio that we have. But yeah, mm, any questions from oh, yeah. there? Yeah. So Is campus social life easy to settle into? That was a question. Yes, it totally is. Um, so one thing I would recommend in your first year, try your best to go out of your comfort zone, find your community. There's 800 clubs, you have a million interests, pick an interest, pick a club, see if those are your people. If they're not your people, try something new. The second you find your people on campus and just your home, all 5,300 acres start shrinking and you can walk through campus and just see people you know left and right and Davis will become home. It's what happened to me, it's what's happened to a lot of other people. I definitely recommend that's how you go about doing it just because it makes Davis Davis and those Davis vibes that I was talking about earlier, that's how you kind of get those Davis vibes going. Um, and so it is pretty easy. Uh, we're gonna jump on the sidewalk over here. Um, but it is pretty easy to acclimate yourself to campus just as long as you're putting in what you want to be giving out or getting out of it, if that makes sense. But yeah, great question. Questions? Tips for new students living with roommates? Okay, so tip, some tips for new students who are living with roommates. Great question because living with other people's sometimes be hard. So the RAs or the resident advisors, uh, residential advisors, they try their best to have you guys set up an agreement before, like when the school year starts, so to say. And so they talk to you about guests who come to your room. How are you gonna handle any disputes that you need to kind of handle or anything like that? Um, the best thing I would say is communication 
Um, I think that's one of probably one of the hardest things that I've had to deal with with living with other people. Guys, excuse me. I kind of like to keep my feelings bottled up, um, and not gonna lie, I'm a little passive aggressive, just a little bit. Um, but that is not the best way to handle any situation in like a living situation. Um, and so I would recommend just communicating. If you have a problem with someone like leaving their dishes out or leaving their clothes out, just tell them, hey, can you pick up your clothes? Like the room's starting to smell. It looks like a mess. Maybe we'll light it, like a, put in a plug in an air wick or something. Um, but you know, it's just making sure you're talking to your roommates. That's the best way you can handle it. And just also set some boundaries before you move in with them so that you know what you're getting into. Because for a lot of people, this might be the first time that they're living with someone else. Um, and so it does get a little hard, but the long, or like, as you kind of go through it, it gets a lot easier. Um, so definitely keep that in mind, but yeah. Oh, yeah. So I talked to you guys a little bit about our dining commons before. This building right here is actually, I want to say our newest building on campus. It opened up winter quarter of this last year. So 20, oh my gosh, 29, 2020. Whoa, I'm old. But Latitude is a really awesome dining commons. It has like food from all over the world. There's like sushi, there's Mongolian, a whole bunch of other foods that are just delicious. Um, I definitely recommend coming here on one, so just be aware. You enter in, if you enter through these doors, you're gonna get like a little convenience store type of thing where you get like meals to go. But if you enter through a different entrance, which I'll show you right now, you'll get the dining commons. Um, and the dining commons is kind of like unlimited, it's like a buffet style eating. Um, and so you can show up at like noon, eat until like seven if you have that big of a stomach, but you can literally eat as much as you want however long you want it's all up to you all you have to do is just return your dishes be a nice human being don't be weird um, but it's a really great place to just kind of come spend some time study eat um, you can really do it all so I definitely recommend if you are hungry on campus this is a pretty centralized DC so that you can come and enjoy some of the food that we have here uh, this is the other entrance and so make sure you enter through the Tercero entrance I would say or the south entrance um, and you'll definitely get kind of like the experience that you're looking for with the dining car. Um, and then there's another one, maybe about like, I wanna say like 50 meters away, um, which isn't too far, but let's say this one's super crowded, let's go to the other one. You'll get the same thing. But yeah, any other questions? In my opinion, what is the most confusing thing to learn about Davis? Um, I think I'm gonna say biking. Um, Cause like you think you know how to bike, right? And then you get to Davis and everyone else thinks they know how to bike. And so when everyone else thinks they know how to bike, you're all doing your own thing and then more accidents happen cause you aren't biking together. You're biking as individuals. Um, and so once you start biking with the community instead of individually, biking definitely changes. Um, so going around those bike circles gets a lot easier. Um, and you just kind of know when someone's in a rush and they need to get somewhere, they're the ones pushing a little harder, um, kind of moving their back with it a little. Um, and so you just kind of get to feel the vibe from everyone and just be a better biker, if that makes sense. Um, also just realize when you're on a bike, pedestrians still have the right of way, even though you're on a bike and you're like, I can run you over. No, give the pedestrians the right of way. Be a nice person. But yeah, another question. Uh, this is a unique one. Creepiest place on campus? Oh, uh, so what is the creepiest place on campus? So a lot of our campus is pretty old. Um, because we started around 1908 and we've just been growing ever since. Um, I think I would say the creepiest place on campus are either the tunnels that connect some of the buildings. If you didn't know there are tunnels, girl, we have tunnels. But I would actually, no, I changed that. It's in the Arboretum because late at night in the Arboretum, you hear owls who you hear some like other kind of insect bugs chirping and stuff 
and it's just creepy it's not where you want to be at like 10 o'clock um, so just stay in your dorms you know watch some Netflix chill don't be going to the Arboretum at like 10 o'clock because she's scary she's scary scary um, next question Ah, uh, okay. This is actually one of my favorite questions. Um, so what is the weather like at Davis? Coming from LA, um, the weather in LA is very sunny most of the time. Maybe you'll get a few days of rain. For the most part, I didn't know what rain was because Davis has like, I would say like Mediterranean style weather. So that's like a super rainy winter with about like, I wanna say 19 inches of rain on average per year. Uh, actually, this last winter wasn't super rainy, but it does rain a lot. My first year, usually in LA, I can go out in the rain with like a hoodie and be fine, right? I went out in a hoodie. It literally looked like I took a full-on shower. So do not do that. Get like some rain pants, the rain boots, an umbrella, maybe a fender for your bike so you don't get the freshman stripes. Um, just do get, be prepared for the rain because, girl, she's serious and we don't like her. Um, but during the spring... This is what you get. There's maybe a few stray clouds. There's the beautiful sun turning us all golden brown. There's blue skies. The grass is green. The flowers are blooming. My name is Maya Angelou. I'm writing a poem. Um, but honestly, it's great. I love spring quarter. I love fall quarter. You get the like, same kind of weather there where it's just a really nice day out. During the summer though, she's different and She's hot. Um, and so you get like 100 plus degree weather. Um, and it's just really hot. So you wanna make sure you're, you know where the pools are on campus. And so we have the Shaw Aquatic Center, which honestly isn't open to the public, but we have the Shaw Aquatic Center like right across the street from Tercero. We have um, the rec pool, which just done, looks so good. Um, over on the west side of campus on what are the it's Hutchinson and LaRue, which is really nice And then we also have Hickey gym, which I don't believe is open to the public. It might be But let's just say no for now, um, but we do have Hickey gym over by um, The MU near all those red buses that we might have seen. I don't know if we saw um, But it is a really nice place to kind of just go at any of these pools to go relax tan swim hang out with friends I know me, my friend Kennedy. Hey, Kennedy girl, if you're watching. Um, every single day, spring quarter, our freshman year, um, we would go out to the rec pool and just tan for days. We'd swim for a little bit, come back out, tan. I do it right before a discussion, and then I go to discussion, and these people knew me as Victor, the guy who went to the rec pool. Um, and so just know, there's a bunch of different places on campus where you can chill out during the really hot summers because we bike, right? There's blacktop all over campus, all this asphalt, Imagine just like 113 degree weather on this blacktop. It's like 120 degree weather because black retains heat and it's just, it's not it. But stay hydrated, you know, be next to the pools. You'll be totally fine. Stay indoors. You know what? Use an AC. There we go. That's what you should do. But yeah, next question. I'm saving all the dorm questions for Oh, now. you're right. Everyone, welcome to Tercero. Let's take a quick lap before we actually just start diving in and talking about it. So this building right here is Scrub Oak. Um, there's some over here. That one is Sequoia. Um, I think that one might be, is that Live Oak? Yeah, Live Oak. As you can tell, I honestly didn't live here, but I do know some of these buildings. They're honestly all named after like trees on this side of Tercero. So we have like Scrub Oak, Live Oak, Sequoia, Christmas, kidding we don't have Christmas um, but we do have a whole bunch of other trees um, which are super awesome um, over here we have one of the newer phases of Tercero we have cottonwood redwood madrone um, and then over on the other side which we'll see um, we'll get some of the earlier phases of Tercero which um, are Laban Hall Kearney Hall Campbell Hall Wall Hall things like that um, wow I really do know my Tercero facts um, but it is a really great place. Let's go chill in the middle of the bike circle. Maybe we'll see a biker or two. Why not? Um, but Tercero is one of the three living areas for first year students. You have Cuarto, Segundo, and Tercero. Each of them honestly is amazing and each person who lives in their own living area brags about their living area. I lived in Cuarto. 
So I'm obviously going to tell you Cuarto is the best place to live on campus. You get suite style housing. So imagine like your own apartment minus the kitchen. Um, they actually have the newest dorm on campus now. It's called Yosemite and she's popping. She looks good. Um, and so it's really nice. I definitely recommend you check it out once you're able to come to Davis and actually see it. If not, jump onto the housing page. You can see a bunch of different cool pictures of all the different dorms and what the living area is like. Here in Tercero, I would say the vibes are very modern chic, so to say. So as you can tell, a lot of these buildings um, are like greens, creams, oranges, yellows. Not gonna lie, phase three looks like Jamba Juice to me, um, which is great. Um, there's no Jamba Juice, by the way, it's kind of sad. But it's really nice because these are your traditional style dorms. Long hallways, rooms off to each side, every like floor has like communal restrooms. Some floors even have gender neutral restrooms, which are my favorite to use because no one wants to use them. And I'm like, don't mind if I do, no line for me. Usually there's no lines, but I just like the gender neutral restrooms. They're a lot more fun. Um, and so it is a really cool place to live. If you've ever seen Monsters University, it's exactly what the dorms look like there where you just kind of have the long hallway, rooms off to each side. Mike Wazowski pops out on one, kid, no. Um, but it is a pretty cool, fun place to live. We have grassy areas all over the dining, or the residential areas so that in a nice day like this, you can go out, you can play spike ball, frisbee, soccer, you can do whatever you want to do. I spent a lot of my days just tanning out on the lawn, which was a lot of fun. Um, so I definitely recommend that. Tercero is actually the one closest to the cows. So a lot of people here, UC Davis, cows are the same thing. We're not. But we are and so right next to us you can't see it but we do have our cow friends our cow we fuzz we love them um you're always going to remember the first cow that ever licked you on campus okay we all do we all know the number and we love that cow where is it now who knows but she's out there trust um but it is pretty fun because you do have all these different things close to your Sarah. Segundo, on the other hand, um, is more like close to the gym. It's also close to campus. You're right across the street from McRite Aid and stuff. Um, it's a cool place, very, I would say, lively, I would say. Um, it's honestly just like a really fun, lively place um, at any point. If it's rainy, it's still lively. If it's sunny, it's lively. If it's gloomy, it's lively. They're just fun, popping people. Um, and then over at Quarto, um, I'm gonna say wholesome because I was there and I'm wholesome. <laughs> But it is very wholesome. It's kind of more like homey vibes because you have your own apartment type living where you have like a common living area. Um, you're like, you can have your own restroom sometimes. Um, I don't think that's an option in Yosemite, but it is still sweet style housing where every like few rooms share a communal restroom. Um, so definitely keep that in mind. There are a bunch of different options for you to live as a first year. Um, and they're all equally as great. It kind of just depends on what type of living you want. Um, so definitely keep that in mind. Were there any specifics about housing? Um, I think some people wanted to know if they are afraid they're going to get lost on campus. <laughs> oh, uh, okay. So that's a good one. I got lost all the time my freshman year. Um, and it was because I never really paid attention to where I was at. But after, I want to say maybe like a week, you're, you're going to know exactly where you're There's some pinpoints on campus. So you know you're at the MU when you're by the MU. You know you're over at the ARC when you're by the Activities and Recreation Center, the ARC or on-campus gym. Um, you know you're in the Arboretum if you're in the Arboretum. You just know the places on campus and generally where they are. If you don't, there's a campus map online that just helps you find the place where you need to go. Um, usually, first-year students, after, like right when you get to campus, you try and find your classes before your classes start. So if your class is in Wellman, you know you need to go over by the Memorial Union. If your class is in Silec, go to the science or Life Sciences District. If your class is in the Earth and Physical Sciences building, she's a little hidden, but she's behind the engineering um, like district, so to say. Um, and she's kind of hidden off towards the Arboretum. It's a really cool building, has a bunch of different rocks around it. Uh, but you just know and you get to know it as you kind of just walk around and get lost. So. And there's always somebody to help. Yeah, that too. We're all friendly. I don't think there's ever been a time on campus where I haven't seen more people smiling than not smiling on campus. So just stop some of them go, hey, where's Olsen Hall? They'll be like, oh, it's down Hutchinson. They'll tell you that, trust. So yeah. More questions? Yeah. Um, Oh, like the living and learning communities? Yeah, living and learning communities. What are the living and learning communities? So, 
let's say I'm a first year, I'm gonna go into the dorms. Uh, I have a bunch of different interests. I love being sustainable. Um, I identify as an LGBTQIA resource student. I love being quiet. I love all these different things, right? You can choose a certain community that you want to be a part of. So you can live on the quiet floor. You can live on the sustainability floor, the wellness floor, the pre-health floor, the honors floor. Um, they have cultural floors. So you can live on um, Gasa, which is the like Latinx, Chicanx community on campus. We have the uh, like the black community on campus which is over here in Tercero and Campbell Hall which is super awesome I know a bunch of I actually know the RA or the old RA for that living and learning community and she's so much fun um, so there's a bunch of different learning and living communities which are just special interests that you as a student have and want your fellow peers to be a part of as well um, and they're honestly really a really great way to meet friends if that's something you want to do um, and so me and my roommate, we lived on the sustainability floor my freshman year, and I had a great time. We were those people in the dining comments just going, eh, compost, and it was a lot of fun. But yeah, next question. Um, actually, you did get a lot of questions in the previous one that we didn't answer about sustainability. Yeah. yeah. Do you want to walk and talk about sustainability, or is yeah, there Yeah, let's go. Okay. So, fun fact, um, Davis has, and not gonna lie, always will be the number one in sustainability. Thank you in sustainability, whoa, that was so good, Mimi. Um, always will be like number one in sustainability. So we had this thing called the 2020 initiative, which was an initiative trying to get, I think all the UCs to be 100% waste free or close to it. And not gonna lie, we got pretty close. We're pretty good. Uh, because all over campus we have compost bins, we have a bunch of different cool things um, that like work with the light fixtures, a bunch of different solar panels and stuff. Um, and so we try our best to be sustainable. Um, at the Coho and all the different eateries on campus, they only give you compostable like containers and like fork, spoons, knives type utensils. That's the word I was looking for. Um, and so we're a very sustainable campus and we want to make sure everyone's aware of the environment, climate change, different things like that. Um, but yeah, great question on sustainability because not gonna lie, we love it. We're a big fan. Yeah. Um, first of all, there's a ton of transfers online. Yeah. Say hi. Hi, um, transfer students. Yeah, yeah, so are there different like communities or niches on campus that are specific to transfer students? Yes, there are. Um, over by the quad, I showed you guys Dutton Hall. Or if you haven't tuned in, over at the quad, there's this building known as Dutton Hall. Um, inside that building, we have the um, transfer student and re or the transfer reentry center, um, which is a center on campus specifically for our transfer and reentry students to have advisors, people there to talk to, to be able to meet other people in the community of just transfer students. There's a whole bunch of different ways where you can meet other transfer students. Even just in like the first few weeks joining a new club, uh, you can definitely find people who are also like junior transfers or sophomore transfers and find your people on campus, but the Transfer Reentry Center would be your first point of contact because they can help you specifically with any transfer needs that you would have. But yeah, good question, transfer students. Welcome to the Engineering District. So if any of you guys are engineers of the sort, chemical, um, environmental, what else is there? Biomedical, this is your home. And so this building right across the street over here, this is Kemper Hall. I never looked at it from this angle, but it's a pretty cool building. Um, and so there's a whole bunch of different buildings. The three main ones are Boehner, Kemper, and Gowsey Hall. Um, and they all have the specific majors inside of them. I'm not an engineer. I like to say I have the mind of an engineer. I probably don't. But a lot of my friends are engineers, and they say they're all over this department. A pretty cool thing that I recently found out about is the College of Engineering as you kind of progress in your studies, they pair you up with a faculty person, faculty, with a faculty member, there we go, a faculty member so they can help you plan out your schedule. So you have to meet with the professor or with the faculty member to get your schedule approved before you actually go and take the courses you need to take. Another cool thing they do is 
as a senior or like in your last year of your like engineering, it's like your last two quarters, you do this thing called your senior design. And it's where you work on a project that helps you gain a bunch of different experience and actually use what you've been learning in your classes in all these different cool engineering um, industry type jobs, so to say. Um, and so it is a pretty cool program that Davis has here um, for all of their engineering students. Um, so if you're coming in as engineering, honestly, you're lucky. We're tied with Harvard for engineering. Period. Yeah. Next question. I did study abroad. What a great question. Yes. Okay. So over by California Hall, where we started this section of the live, um, we were on California Avenue. Wow, who would have thought? Uh, but going on, like the cross sections are California Avenue and Russell Boulevard, we have our International Center. And so with our International Center inside, we have our study abroad offices. Study abroad is by far the best way to study as a student because you're a student, you're traveling, you are carefree, you have money, you literally can just enjoy your life. We actually at Davis have the largest study abroad program in the UC system and there's also a program called UC EAP which connects all of the UCs together to a bunch of different cool programs that you can be a part of. Um, and so me specifically, I participated in a Latinx health internship in Oaxaca, Mexico where I was working in a bunch of different hospitals um, and like centros de salud which are um, like clinics and I was just observing the doctors on how they interacted with their patients, how they were, excuse me, treating certain like, I don't know, cases, so to say. Um, but then also I got to see a bunch of different surgeries. I want to be an OBGYN, so I literally was just in um, the I don't know what that's called in English. I forgot the OR. I was in the OR the entire time, um, just watching mothers give birth like left and right. You'd think it would be gross, but not gonna lie, I kind of enjoyed it. Um, and so 10 out of 10 would recommend if you're looking to go into the health field, that internship is awesome. And Dr. Yvette Flores, if you're watching, you did a great job shaping that program to be what it is because it was by far one of my favorite experiences at Davis. I had a bunch of different friends who studied abroad in like Spain who loved it. Um, other friends who studied abroad in like a bunch of different countries in Europe. So it kind of depends on your program. You can study abroad for a month, a quarter, a year, a few weeks. It really depends on your program itself. Where it is, it's also dependent on your program. How much it is, depends on your program. You wanna know where you can find all that information though? Online at studyabroad.ucdavis.edu or just google ucdavis.edu um, and then you can just search up the study abroad offices or the study abroad department, and you'll have all the programs there that you can ever imagine. But yeah, next okay. question. What about social life? Yeah. Um, what are some of the things that you love doing with alone and by, like with your friends? With my friends? Days? Yeah. Okay, so I think alone, my favorite thing to do is take a stroll down Centennial, those mornings that I told you. Not gonna lie, Tuesday mornings are the best time to like take a stroll because it's a Tuesday morning, it's super good. Um, you know what, get a coffee at the Coho, then take a stroll down Centennial. 10 out of 10 would recommend. Um, but then you can also take that stroll over into the Arboretum and just chill in the Redwood Grove for a little bit because that is so much fun. Um, and it's honestly, it's just a great place to kind of be on campus if you want like solitude and just to be by yourself. Uh, it's, Arboretum is actually the only place on campus that doesn't have Wi-Fi or in most of the parts it doesn't have Wi-Fi and so if you want to just disconnect and simply journal, plan your week or anything of the sort, that's definitely the place to do it um, and honestly it's just a very relaxing area on campus. In groups though, the quad by far. I will literally spend hours at the quad. Um, I'll show up at like, let's say one o'clock, just chill in the quad, turn a nice golden brown, and then me and my friends will go to a cafe on like third in university and we'll just chill there the rest of the day. That is one of my favorite things to do on campus just cause it's very relaxed, very carefree. I'm just surrounded by people that I love and it's just a really good vibe, I would say, when I just wanna be with my friends and socialize. But yeah, those are my two favorite things to do off-campus 
Yeah. Okay, so a good place to hike around here um, is Lake Berryessa. You can actually take maybe like a 30 minute, you can bike to Berryessa. That would be an awesome workout. Um, in this quarantine, bike to Berryessa. Imagine, I would never. Um, but it'd be a great thing to do because you can bike to Berryessa, take a hike up, it's called like the Blue Ridge Trail, um, and just kind of go, like just enjoy nature. Um, another thing you can do is go float at the Sac River. That's a lot of fun. Um, there's certain like drop-off stations where you can go and just literally float down the river with friends, which is super cool. My friend Molly, her dad has like a rafting um, company up in like, I wanna say like a little more north on the American River or the Sac River. And that was a lot of fun. So there are a bunch of different things that you can do. Uh, you just kind of have to go and look for them. One cool thing that we have on campus that can help you find all these different things uh, is outdoor adventures. Um, and so they have a bunch of different like groups of students who come together and they just enjoy the outdoors. You can go like white water rafting, kayaking, hiking. Um, these are all with Davis students. So you can use this as a way to make friends um, or even just do something that you really enjoy doing. Um, you can go rock climbing also. Oh my gosh, Outdoor Adventures is kind of cool. But yeah, let's kind of take a stop here and look at the area that's around us. Um, I told you guys a little bit about the silo. Um, and so the silo, this is the central point of campus. Like literally this campus around it, right? Um, so let's kind of take it bit by bit. This little brown, like kind of cottagey looking area um, is home to the Eco Hub, which is kind of like a cool little thrift store on campus, as well as our Fridge. Um, so the Fridge is a way to kind of combat food insecurity on campus. So people can like put some food there and then if you like want a quick snack, you can go. I think during the school year, during the fall, someone left a bunch of blood oranges and they were in there for like two days max because people would just walk by, open the Fridge, grab a blood orange, go on their way to class. And not gonna lie, those blood oranges were so good. Um, on the other side though, we do have the ASU CD bike barn. So a lot of you were asking about bikes earlier. We have 40,000 bikes on campus. Of course, we're gonna have our own bike shop on campus. I know a bunch of people who actually work at the bike barn. It's student run. It's a great place to fix your bike because it's right on campus. So let's say you're biking in the life sciences district. You get a flat tire, well, just take it to bike barn. They can fix you up real quick. Cool thing is you can also get bike insurance. So it's like AAA for your bike. Um, so if you need to fix your bike, they can fix it for free because you pay for it monthly. Um, but that's super awesome, so definitely keep that in mind. Over here, this part of the silo, um, I would say this is South Silo, uh, which is home to the Silo Market, which has a bunch of different sandwich options, soup options, pizza options, pretty good place to eat. I had a friend who worked here who made the best sandwiches ever. Hey Han, how's it going? Um, on the second floor, we have CAS, which is our Center for African Diaspora Student Success, which is a great um, like community on campus. So that is one of our like cultural communities, and that's located on the second floor of um, South Silo. We have CASA, which is our Latinx Chicanx um, kind of center over at the Memorial Union on the second floor. We have a Native American center over um, next to the University House, next to like South Hall type area, and a whole bunch more. Um, and one place that unifies all those, we'll see in a bit, is the Student Community Center. And so I'll kind of tell you more about it when we head over to that building. Um, but we also have the Craft Center, so those are non-academic classes that you can take, like photography, glass blowing, woodworking, um, maybe like bracelet making, something like that. A whole bunch of like cool classes that you can take. Um, ceramics, you can take ceramics and get your ghost on, that's super cool. Um, but here, um, this is what I would say, what I would consider the silo. Um, and so this is that eatery on campus that I was talking about earlier. So we have the crepe restaurant, we have um, the Spokes Grill, Pete's Coffee, um, and a whole bunch of like other food options for you. It's newly renovated and now open, temp closed actually, but it will be open when we're all back on campus. Um, and so it will be a great place to study, relax, take a break before between classes. Um, as a bioSci student, I definitely come here because it's a pretty close to the bioSci district, so if I ever needed to hop over, I could. Um, but it's a really great place to kind of relax. That area you kind of see right behind all these different cool trees, 
um, is Gunrock Pub, the only restaurant on campus, the one that serves alcohol, got to be 21. Um, but it is a really cool place, very nice salads, 10 and 10 would recommend. Um, we actually grow a lot of the salad stuff that they use on campus at the Good Life Garden or at other gardens surrounding campus. Uh, maybe like the student farms, which are super awesome. And so there are a whole bunch of different ways for students, if you wanna get involved in anything, I can guarantee you we have a bunch of different cool experience that you can be a part of. Um, a lot of the times during the school year though, right behind us or behind you, um, there's like a awning area because it's our, where food trucks are all parked and then you can just kind of pick up different foods that you want. There's Mexican food, there's Asian food, there's Shaw's like I mentioned, falafel, falafel over rice, extra rice, no spicy, uh, don't forget that. But a whole bunch of different food options for you with all these different food trucks rotating every single day. But yeah, let's kind of continue walking. Questions? Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, I hear there's nothing to do in Davis, is that true? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Sally hears there's nothing to do in Davis. Not is that me. true? <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> um, but there's not, like some people hear that there's nothing to do in Davis. Is that true? No. Exclamation point. I mean, Seriously. Have they been paying attention? Yeah, like I literally have just told you so many things that you could do on campus. Go to the gross anatomy lab, cut open a human body, take the class though, don't actually, never mind. Uh, but there's a whole bunch of different things you can do. Um, the downtown area has a whole bunch of different like yoga, what are they called? Uh, studio, yoga studios, Pilates studios, you can get a job. Who would have thought? Can you talk about the arc actually, there has been quite a few questions about Yeah. Um, so the Activities and Recreation Center, the ARC, that's our on-campus gym. That's one of the things you can do in Davis. Um, and so it's a really nice facility. It was newly renovated. There's a whole bunch of different squat racks. There's a whole bunch of different cardio equipment, free weights. There's an indoor track. There's a rock wall. There's some racquetball courts. There's some table tennis tables. Um, what else is there? Is there's newly renovated? Yeah. Awesome. It is newly renovated. Uh, they, oh, they have ring lights at the top of the building, which make the lighting in all of the building beautiful. Um, there's like an extension to like, like the back side of the arc. So let's say you're a little self-conscious and you don't like everyone watching you work out. There's a portion of the arc that's a little more secluded that you can go to and work out at. So not everyone is like staring at you if that's what you're afraid of sometimes i like going there because you know those little rope things um i like doing them and sometimes i can't do them a lot and i don't like people knowing that i can't do them a lot so i go over there um so definitely keep that in mind um there's a whole bunch of different accommodations that any facility here on campus can make for you you just have to voice your need so to say you don't have to pay for the ARC um, because it's part of your student fees in your tuition. Um, so there's like tuition and then you pay for like your student fees um, and that's what kind of runs the ARC and some of the other things on campus. And so you don't have to pay for it, you just use your student ID and swipe it in. If you're a grad student watching, unfortunately you have to pay for the activities and recreation center, but undergraduates do not. But yeah, any other questions? Yeah, so welcome to the Student Community Center. If you read Student Community Center, it's a very, I don't even know. I, my, I usually make the like Jamba Juice joke here because this building looks like Jamba Juice, but it's not a Jamba Juice. But it does have an addition to the coffee house, also known as the SoCoHo, um, which is a really great place in between classes to get a coffee, grab a snack, do anything of the sort. Um, but this building has six different centers um, on campus. So we have the LGBTQIA Resource Center, the McNair Scholars Program, AB 540 and Documented Resource Center, the Women's Research and Resource Center, the Undocumented Resource Center, and the Student Recruitment and Retention Center. Oh, and the Cross-Cultural Center. Um, so there's a whole bunch of different centers here in this building, and it's meant to bring about the student community. So it gathers everyone here. There's a multi-purpose room. There's a, a, like a design computer lab. There's a computer lab. There's printers. There's study rooms. There's meeting rooms. You name it, this building is a great place to go at any point in your four years. I've been here a lot for a club that I started called, well, I didn't start, but I helped like 
start called OSTEM, um, which is a club for students who are out in STEM connected with the LGBTQI Resource Center. Um, and so all these different centers have a bunch of different cool clubs that were founded within that community that you can be a part of. So if you're looking for a club to join and you know that maybe you want to be with a bunch of other LGBTQI identifying people or other um, Latinx people on campus, come over to this building, look for your center, grab a flyer for a different club, join that club, see if it's your thing. If it's not, join a different club. You'll definitely find your community and this is one of the buildings you want to stop at so you can find that community. Yeah. Next question. Wow, thank you. I trained really hard for that. <laughs> Let me tell you guys. So one time I was giving a tour to a little school, like a middle school, and in, at the beginning of the tour, you usually tell them, hey, like I'm gonna be walking backwards. Tell me if I'm gonna hit a bike tree plane, anything like that. And this group thought it would be funny to just watch me fall. And they watched me fall and then took pictures with me on the ground. Not gonna lie, it was really embarrassing, but that group by far was one of my favorites. Not gonna lie, not gonna lie. But it did take a while, uh, but after you do it, every now and then, it's, I know campus better backwards than I do forwards. So, okay, yeah. Break? yeah, so we're gonna take a five minute break right now. So you know what, gather those questions going on in your noggin right now, with those last minute questions, okay? And save them, jot them down, and we'll answer them when we come back in five minutes. Adios, everyone. What's up, friends? So I know I said we were gonna be back in like five minutes, but kind of got lost, but like, look where I ended up. This is a beautiful place. And look who I found. <laughs> Chancellor May. Aggies, what's going on? <laughs> Good to see you. We're here uh, in the courtyard of the Chancellor's residence. Happy to welcome Victor on the tour. Uh, hope to see you guys back here sometime soon. And uh, happy to be a part of this, uh, this event. Yeah, having a lot of fun. Chancellor May, I have a question, okay? Uh, let's do like rapid fire questions, okay? All right. So, what's your favorite part of campus? Uh, the art. What's your favorite <laughs> part about being an Aggie? Uh, uh, just the love that people have for the school. It's just amazing. Yeah, what's your favorite thing to do on campus? On campus, uh, uh, working out at the art. <laughs> at the art? What's your favorite going workout? To, going to sports events. Okay, what yeah. sport? I love basketball, I love football. Uh, I've gone to almost everything, soccer, volleyball. Uh, yeah. uh, have you been to equestrian? Not yet, but we uh, met with the equestrian team when yeah. we shot the uh, holiday video last year. Uh, and I was yeah. on the horse. I don't know if that has come up at all. <laughs> cool. Favorite picnic day event? Picnic day. So I have to say I love the fashion show because Mrs. May is in the fashion show. <laughs> what? <laughs> so, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, in fact, uh, she wears this red dress um, and it's for ch you know charity, uh, yeah. for women's uh, health awareness. And she always is the first model that comes out in the fashion show. Um, in fact, we've got a model of the dress if you want to shoot that later. but. Um, uh, it's, it's my favorite event because I have to say that. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Um, okay, what is your favorite quarantine activity? Quarantine activity. Um, well, outside of the work stuff, we've been doing, my family's here, so we've been doing Trivial Pursuit, and we've okay. been doing some movies, yeah. but nobody can agree on the, mo the movie, so usually that means everyone in a different room watching what they want to watch. So, uh, uh, but we've enjoyed, uh, you know, sitting down for dinner together, which we yeah. haven't really done in a long time. And doing that every night and walking to into Davis to get takeout, uh, so it. all those things. Favorite restaurant in Davis? Uh, well, I've picked up the ones that are open. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, we've been going to Thai Canteen. Okay, it's a good yeah. one. Mm -hmm. Nice. Have you been to Zio's? Not yet. Not yet. Try Zio's. You try Zio's. Zoe. And then the Indian restaurant, Preeti, Preeti. Preeti. Yeah. Preeti. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. Whoa. Let's see. Um, what? If you were to go back to redoing your undergrad, what major would you choose other than the one you already pursued? Oh, wow. So uh, I'm an engineer and I really love engineering. I may yeah. pick a different discipline of engineering. Okay. Uh, I'm an electrical. I might pick biomedical because that's really interesting to me. Yeah. But if I had to get outside of engineering totally, uh, what would I pick? Um, architecture, maybe? Uh, I enjoyed oh. drawing when I was a kid and I thought about being an architect at one point. Cool. What's your favorite kind of like architecture style to draw? You know, I like the modern styles. Uh, I like uh, uh, things that are sort of futuristic uh, in their perspective and uh, uh, sustainable, taking advantage, uh, not taking advantage of the, uh, of the 
uh, surroundings, but sort of uh, being in harmony with yeah. the natural surroundings. Yeah. Cool. Favorite part of the Arboretum? Uh, I like the ducks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the ducks are fun. I like the wildlife yeah. part. Although I'm not a big fan of the turkeys. Uh, I'm a little bit scared of the turkeys, the actually. Turkeys are scared. <laughs> yeah. I've seen people literally pick up the turkeys. Is that right? I would not get close enough to one <laughs> I would not touch <laughs> the turkeys at all. Okay. For those of you who don't know, we have turkeys that just roam around campus, and they're crazy. They'll stop in front of your car. You don't want that to happen. You do not. Favorite candy bar? Favorite candy bar, uh, Snickers. Ooh, good one. Favorite ice cream flavor? Uh, orange sherbet. And it's not ice cream, but it's sherbet. Yeah, well, I would... <laughs> Consider it. And la favorite dessert? Favorite dessert uh, would have to be uh, apple pie, apple cobbler. Oh. Do you bake? I don't. Uh, my mother in law, my wife's mother, makes really good apple pie, though. So. Mm -hmm. Well, if you were to live anywhere in the world, where would you live? Outside of Davis? Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, some of my favorite cities I've visited Barcelona, uh, Cape Town. Okay. Um, Africa? South Africa, yeah, that was a really nice. South Africa, I mean, Cape Town is a lot like San Francisco. It's very, has a lot really? of similar attributes. Uh, what else? I like Greek islands. Mykonos was fun. Mykonos, nice. Uh, Caribbean. Okay. Uh, I like beaches, so. I, I totally feel it. I feel like the beach is the only place where I actually feel at peace. Mm -hmm. Not gonna lie. Yeah. Uh, favorite state in the U.S.? So I have to say Missouri because I'm from St. Louis. <laughs> <laughs> and my mom would be mad if I didn't say that. But we lived in Georgia for 26 years, okay. and my kids grew up there, and we loved living in Atlanta. So Georgia is still uh, one of our favorites, for sure. Awesome. Do you have any questions for me? So who's seeing this? Is this is going out to all the of our students? Everyone, yeah. yeah. The prospective students, current students, faculty, staff, people in Europe. Yeah. If they want to come here. So you told me you're a fourth year. What's your yeah. favorite memory of UC Davis? Uh, my first Whole Earth Festival. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, I remember just going like, what is going on on campus? And then walking around and just sitting with my friend Emily. Okay. And um, I, we had another friend there. I don't remember who it was. But um, I just remember sitting there and watching the little kids play with bubbles. And like I saw old people like hula hooping <laughs> while a band was playing. <laughs> and it just... It's one of my favorite Davis memories because it's like, what is going on on campus? Yeah. And I feel like most of the time I'm walking around, that's I'm like, what is going it on? It sounds on like Davis. That's and it's just the Davis vibe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very yeah. good. Cool. Yeah. Well, thanks. Thanks for coming over. Yeah. Thanks for, thanks for letting us. us find this. We're in the courtyard at the Chancellor's residence. Yeah. <laughs> Who would have thought? Who would have thought? Not me. Not me. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> but back to my Zoom meetings. Yeah, back to your meetings. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, everyone say bye to Chancellor May. We're going to kind of continue on on a tour. Bye, Aggies. Bye,